Hi guys, um, today I am going to show you how to basically um, set up your existing major house project model so that we can work on it and develop it to be a documentation model. So I've just borrowed someone's project that was submitted previously and the very first thing you're going to do is just go File, Save As and when that comes up, save it somewhere uh, that you'll remember the location, your desktop or your OneDrive. And I'm just going to save it as uh, 2021. And that means you will keep your scoping model. And this one is going to be your documentation model. So I'm just going to save that. And the top name should change. Now what we'll do then is I'm just going to go to this person's... Uh, it depends which drawing... Uh, and the way the students, you guys have set it up. But if I go to this lady's uh, drawing, you can see there's a whole lot of trees and things here. <clears throat> so, a lot of those objects we do not need. In fact, most of them. So I'm just going to go into the object tool and say edit, select all objects. And of those objects, the only one I really want to keep for reference is the north point, And I'm just going to delete all the others. Okay, now this person has got uh, a whole lot of, now I, I can use this drawing that we already have here uh, to um, create my site plan. I'm just going to get rid of all the extra meshes that we had because we don't need those for this one. And uh, we're just going to concentrate on the mesh that we already had. We, we don't really need all this road either. We can just, because the drawing is going to be a 2D drawing really. So basically, you know, this drawing has really got most of what we need. Uh, I'm just going to turn off the cover fill on her on the mesh. So if I go to that, and uh, if you've got the cover fill on your mesh, you can just turn it off because we don't want any, you know, want to keep things nice and clear. Now, the only thing that I'm not so sure about here is in this mesh, um, you know, the lines for the contours are quite heavy, so it might be worth considering. Um, getting a polyline tool and maybe changing it to a dashed line and maybe tracing over some of these uh, contours um, don't go through the deck or the house or anything and basically uh, just I'll just get this one out of the way now if I was to you know basically um, just take a square and again, this will depend on the way you've set your uh, project up. Uh, if I were to then hide the mesh when I finish with it, I'll just hide that layer. You'll see that basically all we really need on this, if you, you look at the checklist, is the spot levels. And that may be something that we can just say, well, okay, go to the uh, worksheet that was set up and say, show us trace reference and maybe all the layers are turned off, I'm not sure. Yeah, so basically we might have to drag this reference or we just leave it where it is and just look at the numbers and say, yeah, I need that 8.9, put it here, put the nine at that contour, and when you're done, you just turn the reference off. Now, what we need for the house on this site plan is just an outline. Now, I think there's a whole lot of slabs in here, uh, which I probably don't really need, so again, I'm just going to stress that the outputs are 2D and in black and white. So don't worry about uh, having a heavy line that looks like it's blue or purple in your monitor. So I'm just going to check. There's a whole lot of slabs or things here. There's a roof that we're going to just... I'm not really worried about that roof at the minute. Slab, yeah, that's that one. But here there seems to be an awful lot of slabs. So I'm just going to select all those slabs. And basically... Uh, I can keep these ones. That's all right. I'm not sure what's happened. There's uh, something here, uh, which I'm not sure that maybe it's a fill. And if it is a fill, um, yeah, there's quite a few of them there. Uh, I can you can delete those if you like, or else trace them off. Uh, I mean, I'll probably just keep that one, which is the I'll keep that one. But I'm not really sure about all the others, so I'm just going to delete those. And you know, you might think, well, hang on, where where's the house then? But if I just go to the ground floor plan and say, show us trace reference, 
uh, what we want to do, and all we need is a heavy outline of the house and just, you know, from where the framing is. And what you're going to do is, again, you could go to this polyline tool. And if you click that, and if we double click it, and we'll get its settings. What I want to do is to make sure this is a solid line and I want it to be really quite heavy. So if you open this little uh, dialog up by pressing that little colored square, and I think it's the fifth one from the bottom is the most obvious one for seeing the different uh, line widths and how they change. So I want you to keep an eye on what's happening up here. So this little black one is 0 0.01. 0.13 and these are the kind of traditional pen sizes that we used to use on our pens with like Rotring or Stadler Faber Castell back in the day. Now I really want this to be a heavy line so I'm going to either use 0.5 or 0.7 so I'm really I'm going to do the 0.7. So I click that it's a solid line and basically then I'm just going to trace the outline of the house. Now I'll just use this uh, geometry now I'm not going to go around the whole house because that's going to make the bit quite long but I just want to show you. Now you can use the shift command to keep the lines horizontal and vertical. Now I'm just going to do a couple of these to let you see what it's going to look like uh, once we have got the whole thing done. So if I go here I'll just do this little recess and then I'll stop. Now you guys will go around the rest of the house. I'm just going to turn off the trace reference and you might think, well, that line doesn't look that thick. But if you zoom in, and then if you right click, you get a little thing called true line weight. And that's going to show you what it's going to print out like. And if I do that, you can see then that the uh, blue line is going to be quite heavy in relation to the other ones. And that's what we're after. Now, again, if I were to hide that mesh that I used to kind of trace the contours, uh, I'm just going to say hide the layer. I don't want to delete it and you know you're getting something that's going to be very representative we're going to have this blue line going all the way around the house now this thing uh, that is a roof covering and you know th those things if you look at the checklist we have got some dashed lines so you can put the dashed line I don't know if we need this slab or this fill um, again you can look at the checklist because we're chatting about things like um, building coverage in our town planning rules and impermeable area but I think if you do that nice heavy line around the whole house uh, if you put all the contours in trace them in and if we put in the uh, the spot levels we won't be too far off um, I think there's a thing called the north point and if we go and say sites you can put in a place a north arrow and I'm pretty sure our north arrow if we get it uh, you know you can put the angle in of the north arrow so this north arrow 68 degrees I'm pretty sure that's what ours is going to be so something close to 68 degrees will be fine and you can then put that somewhere on your uh, site plan or your layout sheet but you might say what's the advantage of that well the reason is that we it'll calculate the bearings for us so again this person uh, I've got the the polyline I'm just going to turn on this person's uh, mesh again because I want to use that mesh to create some boundary lengths and bearings so if I turn the all on and I'm just going to select that mesh uh, let's see I'll just make sure I get the mesh selected and in that case maybe I'll go to the mesh tool and that will prioritize the mesh and basically if you go up to CI tools you can go to sites and I think it's create boundary from polygon and if I just create that you'll see there's been certain little things have appeared now and these have got presets on them so you see the way this has got the length 28.2 and it's got uh, direction that's their bearing 68 degrees now you can actually make a note of that and you, if you don't like these boundary objects we can turn them off the lines you're seeing here are actually the, the yard rules so I mean if I was to select one of those boundary objects uh, and we can edit the settings of that uh, object you can see here it's got the daylight angle and there's the yard setback so if you remember the um, town planning rules that we did in scoping it'll tell you what these setbacks can be and you can use this boundary object tool 
But if you don't want to, it's, it's more than acceptable to just use a dashed line or a light dotted line uh, and draw it as a 2D object. And that's going to give us the same graphical effect and the same output. Now, again, this little north point, I, I, that was turned off in the layers, I guess, when I turned that off. So just remember to use your layer control and use your trace reference and uh, look at the checklist. Um, it all depends what way you prepared and generated your drawing and scoping and preliminary design. Not everyone's uh, project setup is going to be the same as this student's, but it doesn't matter uh, whether you uh, generate the site plan from the ground floor or you drag over from your project map a sea level datum and use a trace reference. Uh, either approach is acceptable. So just remember to get started and I would also advise you to look at the little LECS index that we mentioned, the little PowerPoint that I put in a folder. And I think if you actually show the organizer, uh, and once we show the organizer, and if I bring this organizer into the um, this video, you'll see that in the layout page, you can create new subsets. And just, I mean, you'll find that uh, we won't need these rendered images, but things like the ground floor, uh, you don't need the first floor, we don't ask you for that, but the elevations, you'll find that you've probably got quite a few of the location drawings done already. But that little PowerPoint tells you how to set up a subset for L, for location, A, C, S, and so forth. It's not a very tricky operation, but I'd advise you to do it. Okay, uh, I think that's everything. So hopefully that little video will help you to um, get started and then we can uh, get people underway and start making good progress. Thank you.